Hey kids, it's me, Mr. Josh. Just over here watching my muscles and beard grow. You know how I do. You're right. I'm an imposter. It's just me, old puny arms, Mr. Tim. But boy, oh boy, am I so glad to be with you this morning. This is a rare opportunity for me, as Mr. Josh is enjoying a well-earned vacation. This morning, we're going to talk about receiving God's greatest gift to us. And we all love receiving gifts, don't we? But the greatest gift of them all is God's gift to his children. Okay, so what you're going to need for today's festivities include the adults in the household, a pen and paper to take notes, your stickers or sticky notes in the house, and your Bible. And don't you go forgetting your thinking cap now, because Mr. Josh might be on vacation, but that doesn't mean your mind can take a break. Okay, I'll see y'all soon. Can't wait. Okay guys, I hope you have everything you need because it's time for the arrival activity! <clears throat> sure that's not annoying. Okay, so we're going to be playing a version of tag where everyone you're with, including the adults, will get five sticky notes or stickers stuck to them to start. And instead of tagging one another, you have to go around and try to take as many stickers or sticky notes from your family members and stick them to yourself. At the end of the time, whoever has the most sticky notes or stickers on their body wins. Two minutes on the clock. Game on.
wasn't that a ton of fun? So typically when you play tag, only one or a few people are it. But in this game, who was it? Everyone. And that everyone idea applies to faith too. You see, Jesus came for everyone. There isn't anything you can do to make God love you more than he already does. Jesus gave his life so that everyone could be forgiven and have a relationship with God forever. Just like you don't have to do anything to earn the gifts you receive on your birthday or Christmas, Jesus is a gift for everyone. And with that, it's time to get out of your seat, onto your feet, and dance into this beat. Let's all sing together as a way to thank Jesus for all the gifts that he's given us. I'll see you soon.
Hey, Journey Kids, it's Miss Nahana. Merry Christmas in July. Well, we are in a new month. It's not quite Christmas, but this month we are focusing on the greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ, and he is an amazing gift. Um, our memory verse for the month, though, comes from Ephesians 2.8, and I want to go ahead and read it for us. Here we go. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. Ephesians 2, 8. Well, I know that's a lot to meditate on, but I just want to kind of go over just a couple of pieces in this verse. So the very beginning it talks about for by grace. Here it is referring to God's favor, his power over all of us who have sinned against him, which is all of humanity. That's that's me, that's you, everybody is included under this. Um, but his grace is offering to those who have faith in him. And we talked about last month um, that faith is believing or trusting in what we can't even see. Um, so his grace is offering to those that have faith, salvation. Um, so again, a lot to, to meditate on, um, and we'll practice the verse each week during this month of July, but what I want you to do here in the next couple moments or sometime this week um, is make some kind of gift. So, you know, you can grab some ribbon if you have any lying around, um, and if you want to, you can write the entire verse on it or just Ephesians 2.8, or I just wrote Grace, Ephesians 2.8, and then you can mark it in your Bible in Ephesians. Um, that way you can open it up as you're practicing that verse. Um, you can also do a bookmark if you want to here. I wrote the verse on it, and on the ribbon, a gift, um, I wrote Grace on it as well. Or you can grab any wrapping paper, or here I just grabbed a brown lunch bag, and I just wrapped it over a book, but you can write the whole verse on it or just Ephesians 2.8 um, and set it next to your bed or on your desk. That way, when you see it, it's a visual reminder um, about this verse um, and how God's grace is a gift to you. You don't have to work for it. It's nothing you have to earn. He gives it merely because he loves you. He loves us. So go ahead and work on that. Practice the verse this week, and then I will see you next time. Take care.
Erica, and I want to tell you about my favorite month of the year. <gasps> no, I want to sing about it. I love July. You want to know why? I love July. You want to know why? It's because July is the month where you can play outside, eat homemade ice cream, and do all the fun summer things. But it's also when we celebrate Christmas in July. Have a holly jolly Christmas. It's the best time of the- It is the best time of the year. Some of you are probably thinking that it doesn't feel like Christmas time, and that's okay. It doesn't have to feel exactly like Christmas time to celebrate it. That's what Christmas in July is all about. It just takes a little extra faith. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Take Christmas presents, for example. Even though we can't see what's inside, we have faith that it's something good and exciting because it's from someone who cares about us and wants us to be happy. Like this one is from my friend, Haley. Man, do I want to see what's inside? Not a problem. Just gotta focus all my senses. Or maybe I need to focus with an x-ray machine. Yeah. Okay, it's not a real x-ray machine, but it's homemade and it should do the trick. <laughs> Just one thing first. Got it! Now I can see what's inside. Hmm. It's kind of dark in here. This may take a while. Today's story is all about gifts, by the way. Actually, it's about one gift. And it's a big one. You won't want to miss it. See you soon. Maybe it's a pair of socks. Or a composition book. Those are kind of black, aren't they? Huh. Well, good morning, Journey Kids Elementary. My name is Miss Carrie. I'm the director of Journey Kids at Tower Grove. If you have younger siblings, you've maybe seen me on the preschool videos. Uh, hence, Ollie here and all of his friends. But today, Mr. Josh is gone, and so Mr. Tim's filling in for him, and I'm filling in for Mr. Tim. Got it? So, Erica is pretty excited about Christmas in July, and she's trying to get into this gift from her friend, which got me thinking about some of the gifts that I've gotten from people before. Can you think about what's the best gift that you've ever received? maybe for your birthday or another special occasion. I know for me, one of my favorite gifts that I got as a kid was a brand new bike. So whatever gift you're thinking about, I wanna remind us that it's a gift, right? Whoever gave it to you, they didn't have to give it to you. You didn't earn it. They probably gave it to you because they love you. And that's what we're gonna talk about today is really God's gift to us. So before we read our scripture, I'm going to ask you a few questions before we go there. We're going to be in the book of Ephesians if you want to start turning there in your Bible. So first question, is Ephesians in the New Testament or the Old Testament? If you said New Testament, you're right. Okay, second question. Who wrote the book of Ephesians? Was it Paul or Peter? It was Paul. Now, this last one might be a little tricky. Think about the songs you've learned to memorize the books of the Bible. What book comes after the book of Ephesians? Do you remember? If you said Philippians, give yourself a pat on the back. Great job, guys. All right, before we read our scripture, I want to remind us the three things that we know about the Bible. One, it is true. Every story in the Bible really happened. Two, it is one big story. All the stories together tell us how much God loves us. And three, it's all about Jesus. He is the hero who came to rescue us. All right, we're going to read Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, just two verses today. This is what it says. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. 
And so we're going to dig into that a little deeper today. You're going to hear a story and then Mr. Tin is going to be back and do a little review and discussion time with you. All right. Thanks for letting me join you today. So listen up for what's next. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Ephesians, Chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Rin grabbed a handful of granola bars from the pantry and tossed them in her duffel as Aunt Dina watched. I don't know if they'll have snacks there. Aunt Dina raised an eyebrow and took a sip of coffee. Is it one of those church camps? I guess. I, I mean, Jess invited me. It's in the mountains. It sounds cool. You're going to have to shape up, you know. You don't go to church like them. Hey, I don't get in trouble. Rin's aunt grinned and shook her head. <laughs> Whatever you say, hun. Rin's mom breezed in with a rain poncho and handed it to Rin. Come on, Dina. Rin's a good kid, and she's going to have a great time. There's Jess. You go and have fun. It was a three-hour trip up to Camp Hickory. Jess and her mom chattered away, but Rin couldn't help thinking about Aunt Dina's offhanded comment. I do mess up a lot. <laughs> Images scrolled through Rin's head like scenes from a film. The times Rin snapped at her little brother. Go away, Keegan, you're such a pain. That time last week when mom shut off Rin's internet access. That is so not fair. And Rin snuck the password off of her mom's phone. And that exam where she accidentally saw the answer off of her friend's test and wrote it down anyway. I shouldn't have done that. Hey Rin, we're almost there. Jess's cheerful voice cut into Rin's thoughts. She tried to smile as she looked out out the window at the winding mountain road and high blue sky. Great! Rin's worries haunted her as they checked in and made their way to the cabin. These kids all go to church. They know the right stuff to say and do. Rin glanced over to see Jess struggling with her oversized duffel and backpack. She decided it was time to level up. Hey, let me get that for you. But you've got... I can do it! Rin staggered toward the cabin, hauling both of their bags. Inside, they met their counselor, Sally. Hey there, I think this is all of us now. I'm really sorry, but the bottom bunk by the door is kind of creaky. We usually draw straws to see who will sleep there. I'll take it. What? Oh, well, that's great. At dinner, Rin looked out for more ways she could blot out the memories of her mistakes. They ran out of cherry cobbler. Here, you can have mine. When Sally spilled her water. Oops, I'll just. I got it. I'll run over to the kitchen and get a towel. After dinner, everyone hiked the half mile toward the outdoor amphitheater for the evening gathering. Rin's eyes darted back and forth, looking for more ways to help. Hey, you can slow your roll now. Sally fell into step with Rin, who grinned sheepishly. This is all kind of new for me. <laughs> me too. It's my first year as a counselor. It's just, everyone here has gone to church forever. They've got it all together. <laughs> Trust me, they don't. I don't. But at least they know the rules, the right stuff to do. Rin, you have been incredibly helpful and kind since you got here, which is awesome. But you don't have to do everything perfectly to fit in. At camp? Yeah, at camp, but also with God. That's what this week is about. Having fun and relaxing, knowing that it doesn't matter who you are or what you've done. God totally loves and accepts you anyway. Rin frowned as she hopped over a fallen log across the trail. I lied to my mom last week. Well, own up to it. She'll still love you, and it sure won't change how God feels about you. <laughs> Not to be all churchy, but can I tell you this verse I love? Sure. It's the first thing I read when my friend Carl gave me a Bible three years ago. God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do. It is God's gift. It is not based on anything you have done. No one can brag about earning it. Christ, that means Jesus, right? Yeah, we'll talk about all that this week, but just know you can't work for God's love. He already loves you completely. 
Whether or not you lie to your mom or take the creaky bunk or give away your dessert. It just feels like, I don't know, I should have to do something. I know, right? But just letting God love you, that's the most important thing. Doing good stuff comes after knowing how loved you are. Rin took a deep breath trying to take it all in. As the dust began to settle, she saw a large campfire ahead with rows of benches. Jess waved. Hey Rin, we saved you a seat. Rin turned back to Sally. Do you have a place to sit? Go ahead, I'll see you for s'mores after. Rin jogged over to the bench where Jess and the other girls from the cabin were sitting. It was a lot to process, but for the first time all day, she felt like she could relax because she knew there was nothing she had to do to fit in. I just can't see it. Can, can you see it? No. Well, you know what I can see? I can see the amazing gift God gave to us. Not something we earned or worked for, <laughs> but a gift God had planned since the very beginning. See, when Adam and Eve first turned away from God, sin entered the world and people's relationship with God was broken. And people were waiting on God to send a savior. And that's exactly what he did. He sent Jesus to die on the cross to pay for the price of our sins. Jesus was God's gift to the world. So it's easy to think of things we can hold and unwrap as gifts, but this gift from God is so much bigger than anything that could fit inside a box. You'd need a really big box. Bigger. 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 Bigger? It doesn't matter if you found the biggest box on the planet. It still wouldn't be big enough. That's because there's no limit to God's grace. He loves you more than you can imagine. There's nothing you could do that would make him love you any more or any less. He sent Jesus so that we could have a relationship with him that will last forever. So the one thing to remember today is this. Jesus is a gift for everyone. When we believe that, it helps us do good things and love others, not because we're trying to earn God's love, but because we already know how much he loves us. And if you're not sure what you believe about God yet, guess what? God loves you so much, whether you realize it or not. It's like God is giving you a Christmas gift. All you gotta do is unwrap it. <laughs> That's the only way to really know what's inside. I'm going to the movies. Merry Christmas, everybody. What a message. It's incredible how much is packed into the Bible. This was just Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, and there's so much for us to unpack. So we're going to do that now. I have five, count them, five, not dollar foot longs, but true or false questions for you. Okay, and if you think the statement is true, you'll do the twist. Parents, you might need to help your kiddos with that one because it is an oldie, but certainly a goodie. If you think the statement is false, you'll do this new move I discovered called the floss. <laughs> you probably haven't heard of it because I am ahead of the times. Okay, are you tracking with me? If you think it's true, you do the twist. Both start with a T. If you think it's false, you floss. Both start with an F. Okay, question number one. You have to shape up and get your act together before you go to church. God doesn't require us to have a certain behavior or actions in order to go to church. He wants us to pursue relationship with him no matter what stage of life we're in. Number two, Rin was worried that she wasn't good enough to go to church camp. Unfortunately, that one's true. She was worried that all the other campers had more experience in church and knew more about the rules. 
Number three, you can work for God's love. True or false? That's a turbo false, folks. God won't love us any more than he already does if we act a certain way. He could never love us any more than he does right now. Number four. Camp counselor Sally encouraged Rin that doing stuff comes after you know how much you are loved. That one's true. When we know how much we are loved by God, we're inspired to love others like he loves us. Fifth and final question. In Ephesians, we learn that it is by God's grace that we've been saved. Oh, ho, ho, ho. thank goodness that is a true statement. God gives us this gift so freely, not based on our actions, because those aren't going to earn it. This is a free gift from God because he loves his children. Okay, guys, so we are going to go ahead and dive a little deeper with a few application questions. So take this time to talk with those around you about this free gift that God has given us because he so dearly loves his children. Go ahead.
You guys, I'm not ready to let you go yet. But can I just tell you how much I have adored every minute I've been able to spend with you this morning? Now I know what you're thinking, and yes, your beloved Mr. Josh is coming back next weekend. I might not ever come back. <laughs> but I just want to thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and hopefully you have a greater appreciation and gratefulness for the free gift that God gives us. So let me pray, and then I will introduce our good friend Amy, who has a family challenge for you this week. Pray with me. Dear Lord, we come to you so grateful. We come to you because you are the giver of every good gift, and you love your children. You know the hairs on their heads, and Lord, you know the boogers in their nose and everything there is to know about them. Lord, we are imperfect people, and you are a perfect God, but you still desire relationship with your children. Lord, we love our journey kids, but we don't even come close to the love that you have for them. So each and every day, I pray that we enjoy this gift that keeps on giving, the gift that you've given us, that we have a seat next to you in heaven. Lord, thank you for giving us your love, purpose, strength, courage, and security. Lord, you give us everything that we need. Thank you for these kids, and I just pray that they continue to learn more and more about the love that you have for them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, gang, it's time for Miss Amy. I'll see you soon. Wow, friends, it looked like you had so much fun this week playing in the water. I saw folks who were playing with water guns and water balloons, some who were in pools in their backyards, and others who were in community pools. I'm glad you had fun. Let's take a look at what you were up to. All right, friends, this week we are gonna do a sports challenge. That's right, grab your favorite sports items and go outside and play sports with your family. If you like playing basketball, maybe you could do some uh, trick shot videos for us and let us see your skills. If you like to play baseball or volleyball, whatever it is that you're up to, share pictures with what you are doing this week playing sports. I can't wait to see what you'll be up to. Bye, guys.